moles of H2O. So we're not done yet, but we're at a similar place to the previous problem. In previous problems on Tuesday, we might have moles of carbon and moles of hydrogen. And what we did was we took and divided by the smallest number of moles to try and get an empirical formula with small whole numbers. The smaller number of moles is the moles of nickel two sulfate. So I'm gonna divide through both of these by the moles of nickel two sulfate. And of course, for the top here, I'm just gonna get one. And for the bottom here, 0 0.00577 divided by 0 0.00191, I get 3.02. And 3.02 is very close, except for basically sig figs and rounding errors to the number three. And what this is telling us is there's a three to one ratio three moles of H2O for every one mole of nickel two sulfate. And that three is our X. So I'm gonna write this down here. So X equals three. And then as always, uh, and this is a good rule of thumb for anything you do in my class, uh, go back to the question and make sure you've answered it. Sometimes there are a couple questions inside. Uh, this one just says, what is the value of X for this hydrate? We have the x equals three. You don't have to box it, but uh, sometimes it helps me stay organized to know that I've reached the final answer. Any questions about this, que uh, this, or, uh, this problem? Okay. If not, then... Yes, I have a question. Sure. Yes, so if we, if we use another method to do that, is it okay or we have to use the same method like you? Oh, good question. So uh, you do not have to use the method I use at all. Um, so, but you do have to show your method. Okay. So, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I realize there's a lot of different ways to do this. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, good question. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and uh, the other thing is keep in mind that I'm showing a lot of method here because these are your notes um, and I want you to have a complete set of notes. That's part of the, the reason we're doing this. Um, but I mean, I, I also show a lot of method when I solve the problems anyway. This one has CP on it. That stands for companion problem. Look for the companion problems to be posted with answers. Uh, you do not have to do the companion problems when you submit your lecture outlines. The companion problems are only do, or sorry, only do them if you need more practice. And what I've attempted to do is I will take the problem that we just did, work it all out, and then I will give you one that's similar in basically all ways for you to practice and make sure you understand the concepts. And then I post the answers so that you can see if you've done it right. Oh, excuse me. Yes. What do you mean by, um, do we have to send our notes to you? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. <laughs> I, I wasn't here last class, so I may, I'm new, so I don't know. That's okay. So when you go into Blackboard, you'll see that under course contents for week one, and we'll talk more about this uh, after I go through today's lecture notes, because I'm going to talk about all how the course runs. We're going to go through the Blackboard site, but um, yes. Yes. So you are going to take uh, notes during lectures, and then you're going to uh, basically uh, uh, use your phone to turn them into a PDF using an app called Adobe Scan, and then turn them in. And you'll see that for lecture outline one it, in Blackboard, it's an actual assignment. So it accepts documents. And I will give you four points per lecture outline. So anyway, we'll talk more about that. So, but uh, yes, you will need to submit your notes. And uh, like anything in this class that you need to submit, you will get points for it um, because a general rule of my class is if I'm going to make you uh, work, then I'm going to give you some points for doing it. Any other questions? I was going over the recording because I missed like a part of the notes in the first class. Yes. And I noticed that um, it didn't pop through like the, I couldn't see the notes. I could only see the speaker because you were using your phone. 
So I was wondering if there was any way like we could see those notes. Yes. So I will post. So I've posted the uh, PDF of my notes from that session inside Blackboard, and I'll show you after we do these notes. And then I hope to have a video with uh, audio um, by Sunday for those notes uh, in case you'd like to watch it too. Okay, thank you. Of course. Any other questions? Excellent. Okay, so here's uh, another uh, companion problem. Uh, and I will say this, there's a bunch of these because it is uh, useful for you to know how to do these. So, uh, and I'm sure you will. Now, uh, here's another type of problem. This is called combustion analysis. And combustion analysis is a process that burns an unknown sample containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, and I should note, sometime, and sometimes other elements, as we will see, and sometimes other elements, in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and H2O. From this information, the empirical formula can be found. Add in the molar mass and the molecular formula can be found. And so here's a schematic representation of how the combustion analysis works. You've got a compound to be analyzed, and this is oftentimes called the unknown. Uh, and it's an unknown sample. So it goes in here. You add oxygen or you flow oxygen through this uh, tube and you place a Bunsen burner under it and the compounds will burn and because the oxygen is moving through whatever is produced which includes carbon dioxide and H2O will then flow this way the H2O is trapped here the carbon dioxide is trapped here and then we weigh each of these so and I guess since this is chemistry class we should say we take the mass or we measure the mass. Um, and, uh, and therefore, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to use the mass of carbon dioxide and the mass of water to figure out what is the empirical formula of the unknown. Now, um, I'm gonna write a version of a, of a reaction here. It's gonna say that our unknown will be represented by this formula here. C sub X, H sub Y, O sub Z, where X, Y, and Z are the subscripts that we normally find in chemical formulas. Excuse me, Professor. Yes. Yeah, is there any way I can see what you're writing down? Because I can just hear you, I can see what you're writing down. Okay, so um, can, can every, is there, I, I'm supposed to have my video pinned so that you can see, are you in, um, Speaker view? Yes. Okay. Um, so is there anybody else who can't see uh, what I'm writing? Because if so, then I will have to adjust. To see, you would have to like click on the talking section in the upper right corner and just click on the one with the video instead of the one up from talking. Yeah, okay. Did that help? Sorry, I'm not sure who. Oh, it says pin the screen. Yes. Hello. So go to the... Uh, picture of my notes and then when you go over it with your um, uh, cursor there should be three dots yes yes and then you should be able to uh, pin the video okay then one more question professor sure is this is this recorded this is recorded yeah yes okay thank you sure uh, okay good yeah, so, and I will say this um, many times throughout this course, uh, keep, keep asking questions. So this class is hard enough when you get all of your questions answered. It is much harder when you don't, so please ask. Good job, everybody. Where we were was we had this general formula for our 